Morning folks and welcome to the Renault Zoe ZE50 van. Now I'm going to be doing my normal job this week, driving it all around the UK, servicing electric cars and repairing them. And I'm going to show you why this is actually a very, very good purchase if you are a van driver. Please remember to check out our other videos and click on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon so you get notifications each time we upload another video. All right, first thing I want to tell you about the Renault Zoe ZE50 van is it's very compact. Um, now, you'll be able to see this all through the week whilst I'm using it. Uh, and it is basically a car-derived van, so it's a Zoe. So anyone who's driven one of the new ZE50s will be very familiar with this. And it's very nice, actually. Got to say, I was expecting to have the bigger screen um, inside, but it, I haven't got that. But then it's a business thing isn't it it's, it's called a business plus i think so maybe they've took it up for for that reason but um yeah it's pretty good um i've got apple carplay which is nice uh so i can just pop my phone down on the wireless charging mat um stick the address in and uh, i'm pretty much good to go 151 so. miles i'm going to get there at 20 to 10. zoe currently at 99 percent uh, state of charge is showing me a range of 213 miles so i'll see you in billinghurst Hi folks, so that's me at my first job in Billinghurst, which is uh, that red Nissan Leaf, which you might be able to see in my mirror. Let me just show you what I've done there. So I'm at 38% state of charge and I've done 135.7 miles. Uh, I'm going to add a few on actually, because I didn't trip the mileage as I left my house. I did it a few miles down the road, so I'll probably add another three miles to that. So just under 140 with 60% ish used. So not bad, actually. Um, a couple of things I've noticed. Um, it doesn't have adaptive cruise control, which is really frustrating. That's something that I'd really like. Um, and some kind of lane follow assist. It's got lane keep assist, but it does ping pong around. Um, but it's okay. It drives so well. Um, even with um, all my gubbins in the back that you can see there, um it's uh, you can actually feel that the the roll bar the torsion on the roll bar is really stable and 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 it's it's opposing the weight as as you go into corners so it feels very very well planted um one other thing which has been an ongoing issue with the zoe is when i got in the van this morning it was nine degrees it was quite cold so i cranked the heater up uh and i set it to 24 and it was quite cold uh so i had to crank it up to high to get any real amount of heat out of it and i found that all the way down that I've had to keep it on high to keep it okay. So um, I mean it's not hot, but it's it's hot enough that that you're you're comfortable. But really, I feel that the temperature that I've had the car at would have been about twenty two on the um, on the on a, a a normal heater. So that that thing there. I don't know if it's just this car, but um, this van rather, uh, that doesn't seem to be working too well. Right folks, I thought I'd just show you what I'm up to. Um, so I've got this Nissan Leaf here. Common problem with the um, drive shafts clicking um, as you uh, apply torque and then go into regen. So there's an element of play between the, um, the drive flange here, which has got the outer spline and the CV joint itself, which is just there. Uh, so we remove that, clean it up, um, apply some proper grease to it, um, and then um, apply the proper torque, and that usually mitigates that uh, that clicking for a while. Anyway, we'll see how long this lasts. I've already done the other side. Uh, that was a real pain. The bottom ball joint was seized in, would not come out. It took me near on an hour to do it, um, uh, and this one's coming off a little bit easier. So this take me about another twenty minutes, maybe. Uh, anyway, uh, let me show you the Zoe. So as it stands at the moment, there it is. It's a bit of a mess, um, but actually surprisingly okay to get on with. I thought it'd be a little bit harder because it's a lot smaller, I haven't got the same access, and I probably will, if, if we had one of these, we probably would do some jiggery pokery, put some drawers in and, and, and things like that. Um, I'm just charging as well, which is nice because I do need a top up because I've got another 20 miles to go south and then uh and then a, probably about 140 miles to get home so currently i'm on 45 percent state of charge same five hours and 10 minutes to to top up but obviously i can stop at a rapid on the way home so i probably will be doing that after my next job 
uh, and that's it that's where I'm at so far so fans doing all right I didn't think I'd like it as much as I have so far but yeah it's, it's, a, it's a good bit of kit and it's a good size it's a good size anyway I'll crack on and I'll see you at my next job all right folks I'm just leaving Shoreham now uh, I've just done a minor service on a Renault Zoe which I forgot to get my camera out for uh, but there was nothing wrong with it really good condition car it took me about an hour and 15 minutes it's now uh, two o'clock uh, I'm leaving Shoreham and I'm gonna head to P's Pottage services and hopefully get a charge there if I can't it doesn't matter I've still got over 100 miles of range so I'll charge somewhere else and that's the great thing about this it gives you that flexibility to charge where you where you ordinarily in a lower range EV you would have to stop there and wait where this I could just drive on by and charge somewhere else so We'll get there and uh, get a top up and then that should get me all the way home and uh, that'll be the end of my first day with the Zoe. So far, not bad. I am at Peace Pottage um, and, would you believe it, both chargers, if I show you, are in use there. So I did check and they've literally both just got on, um, which is... Uh, a bit frustrating but it's the way it is um, and one of them's plugged in over 50% in the Kia Re Nero but never mind um, so I'll look for somewhere else but the beauty is I've still got 80 miles of range left so plenty of options so I'll carry on my journey so I'll see you at the next one hi folks I am here at Cobham services so I'm currently plugged into that machine just there I'm probably gonna stay here for uh, about half an hour and see what I get and then I'm gonna head home because from here it's about 120 miles so as soon as I've got enough I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of here okay welcome back I am home and surprisingly I'm home on time to play football Wednesdays are always a little bit of a rush for me so I'm quite impressed uh, journey of 315 remember we've got to add a few because I didn't trip it quite uh, as I left my house so let's say 318 and if I scroll up I've averaged 4.4 miles per kilowatt hour. Um, I did a quick rapid at Cobham and I topped up for an hour at a customer's house, maybe a little bit more than an hour, but I've got 20% remaining and it's given me a range of 49 miles. And I'll be honest, I can believe that. I think it will do it. All right, I'm gonna leave it there, folks. So all top stuff, well impressed, and I'll see you in the morning. Today is Thursday. It is 7.30, well, 7.37. Um, and I am on my way to Chelmsford. So the car is at 97% state of charge. Uh, I'll just show you my journey that I've got to do today. So that's it there, 120 miles. I've got a Tesla Model 3 uh, for a power lift trunk, power lift trunk and an audio upgrade. And then I've got a Tesla Model 3, which I'm getting some M&Ms out of the rear ducting. So a couple of things I'm liking about the Zoe. Obviously the range and the efficiency is really good. Even now at 97% state of charge, we've got some okay regen, although it does say uh, B-Mode Limited, battery full. Uh, the directional stability, that's like how it holds a straight line and you know when you point it, it, it goes in that direction beautiful absolutely perfect it, you, you can let your hands off the steering wheel and it just follows the road uh, which makes it nice and relaxed so but it is a car isn't it it's a, it's a uh, car drive van so um, you expect it to be good but it is exceptionally good I forgot just how good this Zoe was to drive it's been a while since I've driven one um, and yeah it's uh, it's nice very very nice so, 120 miles to go, gonna get there for 10, which is what time he's booked in for. So, I'll see you in Chelmsford at 10 o'clock. All right, that's me here in Chelmsford. You just see it's 10.08, traffic again was awful. I've just plugged into the guy's pod point. Uh, so, I've still got a range of 92 miles and 40%, and it's gonna be six hours and 25 minutes to full charge which will probably work out around about okay. I've got a job about 10 miles up the road after this. Uh, you can see the kits on top of his bonnet. He's just chucked them on there. Uh, so that's a power front, power trunk, and the audio and the audio upgrade for me to do as well. So I'm gonna be here for a good chunk of time. So, all right, I'm gonna crack on with that and I'll see you in a little while.
All right, folks, that is one down and uh, one to go. So about an hour and a half in so far. So uh, power trunk, that's fitted. Nice. And uh, power front, which we've already seen, that's fitted as well. So nice. So that's it, I'm done here. Um, I was gonna be fitting this, but it doesn't fit actually. The plugs are the wrong shape. So uh, from here, I'm going to only about 10 miles down the road, uh, suck some M&Ms out of some rear air ducts in, uh, and that's it, I'm on my way home. So I think I've got a full charge. So I've been here for about four and a half, five hours. So that's all good. So I'm gonna get on my way. So see you shortly. I'm currently in the back of a Tesla Model 3 and I've got the back stripped and I'm currently fishing M&Ms out of the rear ducting. As yet, I haven't managed to, oh, I haven't managed to get any out. So uh, I'm gonna keep trying and uh, hopefully I'll get them. So what we've made is a Dyson Hoover with a piece of hose pipe in it and we've retrieved those. So I think we've got eight in total. A couple of them have uh, broken up as you can see, but that's it. Job well done. Most bizarre job I've ever had to do. So all good. Right, I'm gonna take uh, the Renault Zoe back to my house. It's 120 miles uh, in this, no problem. Morning folks, and today is Friday. Uh, so apologies, I didn't do an update last night. I got home a little bit late and um, I thought I'd just leave it till this morning. So let me just show you where we got to. So you can see there that we've done 564.8 miles. Um, I've not had to fully charge it actually. I've, I've charged it to 81% um, because I've just realized that the range is so good. Uh, that'll, that'll do us. Um, if I skip up, you can see that um, we're doing 4.2 miles per kilowatt hour. Uh, I did um, drive it back quite sprightly last night, so uh, yeah, not doing all right, doing everything I need it to. If I look at our destination today, it's telling me that it's 99 miles, two hours, and I'll be there at 10 past 10, which is about right, because I've got two jobs at the same location, so that suits me, so it should be a nice early finish. So, I'll see you there. Welcome back. I am in a village hall in a place called Meaden, I think. Um, it's beautiful, very quiet. Uh, the van is, let me show you inside, a bit of a state. I'm sort of getting to the realization that this is probably a little bit small for what I need, which is a real shame. Um, I'm, I am struggling for space a little bit, which is a little bit of a shame because it's such a good van, really impressed by it. Uh, the Tesla Model S is done, it's a 70D pre-facelift, um, the Nissan Leaf's already done as well, that just wanted a uh, key fob battery and a set of wiper blades. Uh, but this is interesting, this is what I want to show you. So this has had a brake lubrication and a service. Um, in terms of the service, everything's okay, uh, but if you have a look at this brake pad, now this brake pad, in terms of what's left on it, there's plenty. It looks straight down the middle. Massive crack all the way down it. So it's had a new set of front pads. Um, one of the calipers had to take off the car uh, and actually hammer the pads out. It was so bad. And these these pads have got more than enough meat left on them. I mean, there's probably 90,000 miles of meat on a, for a Tesla Model S on those. But because they're not put in with any lubrication, they seize up and then they start to crack. And I've gone through this lots of times, but uh, so all the pads have been out. Um, they've all been copper ceramic and they're all free now. So it took a while. Normally this takes me about two hours, but it's taken me close to three and a half. So, but I'm used to it now. It's just the way it is with Teslas. So that's it for here. I'm now heading home for the weekend. Um, I've got about 40, 1% I think, I left with 80, uh, it was 100 miles here, so I used 40% getting here. Um, uh, hopefully that'll get me back to rugby, I'll do a quick rapid at rugby on the grid serves and then uh, and then home. So I'll see you guys Monday morning, so have a good weekend. Okay, I'm home um, and I didn't stop to charge actually. Uh, I'll show you just on the dash if you can see that. Uh, I've got 4% and 17 miles remaining. 
which is actually incredible because that journey back was 92 miles. So I've done a little bit of maths and I worked out that I was doing 5.7 miles per kilowatt hour, which is really, really very good. Admittedly, there was a lot of traffic and it was a slow drive home. Uh, not from me driving Eco, uh, just simply because the traffic was so bad. Uh, but to get back with 4% and 17 miles, um, I used 16 kilowatt hours to do that journey. Um, and to put that into perspective, I charged it last night. That journey cost me 80p to do 92 miles, which is which is nuts. In fact, the whole day has cost me two quid. I'll just show you again, 4.3 miles per kilowatt hour. And so far we've done 741.6 miles. That is since Wednesday. But anyway, I'm gonna say goodbye. It's the weekend, it's Kate's birthday. So I'm gonna be doing that and I'll see you on Monday. So have a good time, see you then. Good morning and it is Monday, it's 20 past seven. I've got a, Tesla Model S for a service and I've got a Nissan EMV 200 today so uh, probably gonna be a longish day because it's quite far down the road uh, now I made a mistake the, uh, the van's actually going back tomorrow so this will be my last day um, so I think we'll be somewhere around about a thousand miles by the time we finish so still a good test so right I'll see you in Kent all right folks so I've had to swap two jobs around because the traffic was horrendous on the way down. Um, it was telling me it was going to take me uh, 2 hours and 32 minutes to do 25 miles. Uh, so I diverted and came to my second job first, which made it, it saved me about an hour. That was a major service on this. 90,000 miles, not a thing wrong with it. So really well looked after. I'll take you over to the van, show you where we're up to. So at the moment we've covered 879 miles and I did charge here. I uh, got here with about 30 something percent. Uh, the weather has been horrendous on the way down, but if I show you the miles per kilowatt hour there, I've got 4.2 miles per kilowatt hour. Right from here, uh, going 20 miles towards South East London, I think. Uh, got a Tesla Model S over there, gonna do that. Uh, need to be there for two, it's one o'clock, so plenty of time, traffic permitting. So I'll see you there. All right, folks, end of the day, last day with the, uh, the Zoe. I've just serviced uh, this Tesla Model S, done a brake lubrication on it. It took a while, much longer than I would have wanted. Anyway, let's show you where we're at. I've been lucky enough to charge while I've been here, so I'm up to 90%. I've been here for a good few hours. Uh, and a, an available 183 miles range. So that's gonna get me home nicely. Um, there should be enough in there for the guy to pick it up tomorrow. So yeah, let's get it home. Hi folks, and that is it. That is me home. I'm at the end of my 1032.3 uh, mile uh, four days work with the Renault Zoe van. And we've averaged 4.2 miles per kilowatt hour. So it's done very well. Now, I want to be really quick and just give you a couple of things that I dislike about the Zoe van, and it's, there's not many. Uh, it's missing adaptive cruise control. Uh, it doesn't have a reversing camera, which I would really like. The rear glass is uh, see-through, uh, whilst they've blacked out the rear windows here, uh, which I found a little bit odd. They've, they've retained the rear view mirror, which is meant to be electrochromatic on this model, but it's not. Uh, and I'd much prefer to have no rear view mirror and that completely blacked out, so uh, for security reasons. It's got no lane follow assist, which I, for my sort of mileage, it's quite a big thing. For most people, it wouldn't even come into play. And I think that's uh, something to do with the fact it hasn't got adaptive cruise control as well, which, which is a little bit disappointing because there's a lot of tech on the car, which works really well. Uh, so yeah, them things there are things that are little annoyances but probably wouldn't stop me having the van the thing that would stop me having the van is i've realized over the four days that it is just too small uh, i'm working on top of my stuff and then on top of it again and it's a bit of a struggle to get in and out but that's not to say it won't suit your needs it's just for me i just i was starting to struggle with it trying to get my jack in and out and things like that um I would have to rack it probably a bit more professionally and, and have access that way and maybe through the side doors because the side doors do open quite wide. As a van, it's actually very, very good and very usable. Now, they're my bad points, pretty much all of them. What you've got to remember is 
This has got a 50 kilowatt hour battery with a massive range. The efficiency and range is just on another level. It really is. I, I'm driving all around the country, topping up people's houses, and it's meaning I'm, I'm avoiding rapid charges. The other thing is it has got an onboard 22 kilowatt charger. So if you've got three phase, you're really going to milk it. Now, let me touch on the really good things. Apart from that, uh, the headlights, auto, full LED, LED front fog lights, directional fog lights, don't need to touch them. Auto high beam works seamlessly. Wipers, auto, all you need to do is work the screen wash. They work seamlessly as well. Really impressive. The van actually, the load area is pretty big considering it is based on a Zoe, but we all know the Zoe is quite cavernous, but in there, there is a lot of room. So depending on what your needs are, that, that may well work for you. It just doesn't quite work for us. The infotainment system, it is very good, although I've just used Apple CarPlay. I can't vouch for Android Auto, but the Apple CarPlay was seamless as well. That worked really well. Maps, music, making calls, the things that you really want work really well. Easy to navigate. That's good. The screen, the uh, LCD screen, really easy, clear to read. Um, no dramas at all with it. The other thing is with the weighting, I feel like they've played around with the suspension they've tweaked it uh, maybe the roll bar is bigger i think that's probably what it is uh, and they might have some slightly heavier uh, suspension springs on there maybe they haven't but to me uh, the handling was just a bit too good with that weight in it for me to think that it was standard um so somebody might be able to put me right i, I I'm, I'm guessing but it just feels like something's been tweaked uh, going around corners and things with it it just seemed you could feel it knocking you back and picking you up so that was good. The auto hold, the electronic handbrake worked really well. The gear stick, which when I first drove the Zoe 50, I wasn't that impressed with, actually is really easy. As long as you've got your foot on the brake, you're just flicking it, literally flicking it. And when you pull it into drive, it goes straight into B mode. You haven't got to pull it down twice. It's just, they, they know that you want B mode. But there's something else, and that is the uh, uh, cruise control. So you get cruise control when you're not in eco mode. You set it to 70, it will just do 70. Up a hill, down a hill, it just does it. In eco mode, it sort of varies the power. So it will do 70 in eco mode if you set it to 70. But as you go up a hill, it will drop off. And it, so it's almost teetering between speed and power usage. And I like that. That kept me driving it in eco mode most of the time and it worked really really well it doesn't really drop below 60 but it will allow you to run off down a hill and speed up so you you get the maximum speed for the lowest power uh, and it's it, it it worked very well i think the engineers have done a good job of that so all in all it's been great it's really made my week easy and the distance it covers is just fantastic so if you are in the market for a van of a similar size and you're thinking about a diesel go and try one of these because you'll kick yourself if you don't it really is worth a try at least a try anyway i'm going to leave it there folks i hope you've enjoyed following me around the country please remember to like share and subscribe and follow us on twitter at kate phantom and i'll see you again soon in another video so take care and bye for now <laughs>